I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Kevin at an SIUE research site. So, what are we doing out here in the middle field? So, this is where I'm doing a project looking at the impacts of artificial breeding ponds on the reproductive success of Illinois chorus frogs. They're a state threatened species here in Illinois. Um, I work with uh, Dr. Esner's lab. And yeah, out here I have 40 pools set up, 20 in the sand prairie, 20 in the wetland. I'm trying to find a suitable site um, for these ponds and trying to see whether or not they serve as better breeding habitat than where the frogs currently go to off-site in some of the agricultural ponds. So, so far, what has been your, what has your data shown, like, which is better? Um, so this year we just started getting recordings of Illinois chorus frogs being out here in the sand prairie. Um, but for right now, most of the frogs are over on the agricultural ponds still. Um, as with any ecosystem restoration project, um, it does take a few years for animals to naturally adapt and come to any restored site. Um, but our data is starting to show that they are coming here to the artificial ponds. Um, as far as suitable habitat, we hypothesize that the sand prairie might be better because it's closer to where the frogs overwinter. And it also, the dry habitat tends to disturb, like deter any uh, predatory species. Um, but unfortunately, like the wetland has been showing a little bit more activity and it's probably because the sand prairie is too dry for most amphibians to come over here. So we have like more diversity over in the wetland than we do in the sand prairie. And then you're also going through a little bit of a dry spell right now. So how's that affecting your results? So yeah, there's not as much, there hasn't been as much rainfall this year as there was last year. So my pools are drying out much faster and it's made it um, difficult as far as being able to draw amphibians out to my pools because they're not retaining water long enough for most species to actually um, stay there and lay eggs in them. Um, the wetland's been doing much better in that case than the um, sand prairie because the sand prairie the pools are much more exposed to the heat and sun whereas in the wetland um, the pools there are covered in a lot of dense vegetation so they lose water um, less quickly and so I've had much more reproductive success with different frog species like western chorus frogs out there um, because they retain water like much more water over time. And we just kind of walked through some of the wetlands, and you're saying that it's supposed to be like waste of deep water. And I don't mm -hmm. know if the camera can see this, but like, we're not wet at all, so it's co almost completely dry back there still. Yeah, like in the southwest corner of the site here, there's supposed to be like a pond there. And yeah, when we walked back there earlier, I mean, there was no water it's whatsoever. A bit, it's a bit moist, but besides that, it's completely dry. Yeah, and I mean... That's the unfortunate thing about ecosystem restoration projects is that you're at the mercy of environmental conditions. Um, if you have a dry spell one year, that could um, have a lot of negative impacts on your project. And it's like you just have to weather through it and hope that conditions improve in the future. So if my cameraman would like to come closer, could you like show us around this pond and kind of what you've done to it? Sure. So. This is one of our ponds in the sand prairie. Um, all the ponds, all 40 ponds are like this. They are Plasgard concrete mixing tubs. They are two feet, two and a half feet in length, two feet in width, and eight inches in depth. Um, all we've done to them um, as far as modifying them, so we've put them flush to the ground so that it's easier for the frogs to get into them. We've put sticks in the corners so that way the frogs and other native species can climb out in case they fall in. And um, we also put vegetation from around the pools in here. We put a lot of like grasses, flowering plants in here to serve as like detritus um, vegetation for 
um, the tadpoles when they hatch and also Illinois chorus frogs they need this vegetation in order to attach their egg clusters um, and as far as the water in here this water is naturally added by rainfall so outside of adding the vegetation and the sticks we haven't done anything else to these pools we basically let nature take its course as any appropriate ecosystem restoration project would we try to minimize interference in the native system so what kind of animals have you uh, found in these obviously there's mosquitoes that's they're probably watching like swat and hit throughout the entire video um, mm -hmm. but besides mosquitoes what else do we have here so I found a wide variety of different vertebrates, invertebrates out here. So yeah, besides mosquitoes, I've encountered earthworms, caterpillars, um, diving beetles, water scavenger beetles, um, dragonfly larvae. Um, I've encountered, um, as far as vertebrates, I've encountered snakes in the pools before, Illinois chorus frogs, western chorus frogs, southern leopard frogs, Northern cricket frogs, gray tree frogs, American toads, fowler's toads, um, and yeah, some other like reptiles, um, red-eared slider, like baby red-eared slider um, turtles have hung out in these pools. Um, but overall, like a wide diversity of different species native to this area. Well, I'm sure this has been a very long video because I can see the light dropping. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for telling us about the research. I found it extremely fascinating. I'd like to see it. Oh, what you come up with in the future. Yeah, definitely. I should be publishing my report to SIUE um, later this year. And yeah, once I publish it, it'll be available in the SIUE library for um, students and the public to look into to see what my research was like. Well, I'll definitely read it. Yeah, definitely. I'll look forward to it. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.